So I want to welcome people who are sort of rolling in right now for the Power of With uh, webinar series where we're helping, uh, I guess, each other through this crisis. It was uh, some of our, my teammates' idea to put something together that brought in some of our partners to answer the, uh, the real world questions uh, and have audience participation to help each of us through this. And so in some ways, uh, I found over this last couple of days that it's been therapeutic for me. I even started uh, crying yesterday as I started thinking about uh, the sacrifices that my teammates were making, the difficult moments that, uh, that we're facing in our personal life. And, uh, and all this is we, uh, we got to keep the business going. And, and so today we're lucky to have uh, people who know real estate, whether, whether we are a renter, uh, a tenant, uh, looking to for a space or whether we are a landlord or maybe some of us are both right so these today we're going to be answering questions about what are we going to do with these commitments that we have to our tenants what are we going to do with these commitments that we have to our landlords um, and, and, and is there a way to sort of navigate this without burning bridges and you know without uh, without embarrassment and uh, so because I don't think I think in this at this time, uh, none of us uh, have, have gone through anything like this. I think if anything was close, it's probably 2008 in many ways uh, in the real estate market, a lot of residential. But this is way different because it's so sudden. So today we're bringing on uh, Greg and Scott. There was Capital Rivers. I, I forgot to turn it over to my main man, Rick. He's actually the, uh, the brains, but well, he and, and, and our team are the brains behind this. So I want to make sure Rick uh, Spencer, my right-hand man here at Haney Biz, has a chance to sort of talk a little bit about what this means to us and, and what this uh, likely means to you all as well. Yeah, Rick. thanks, Mark, <clears throat> and welcome to all of our attendees. Uh, we've been running our Power of With uh, webinar series now for a week, uh, every day, uh, with some amazing partners, um, and you know we've been posting uh, all of these recordings on our YouTube channel uh, as well as our podcast channels. Um, and the support uh, from our community uh, for one another has been uh, overwhelming. And as we thought about community partners that could help in this crisis, uh, we could think of uh, none better than Capital Rivers Commercial. Um, so we're really excited to have them as community partners. Uh, Greg Aguirre, who is president uh, with Capital Rivers Commercial, and Scott Toussaint, uh, who's general counsel. And um, they'll give you a little bit about their background um, in a minute. I think it's great that uh, Scott with the, as a general counsel is on you know, the line today, especially on this topic, right? Because it's a financial question, it's a legal question, it's a relationship question. And so we've got two great experts uh, today to help us navigate through these challenges. Uh, as we go through the webinar today, uh, there is a Q&A icon on the bottom of your screen. So feel free to submit questions. Uh, we're usually great about getting to all questions. Uh, if we can't answer them, uh, today in the webinar, we can follow up afterwards. Um, so without uh, further ado, I'd like to welcome again, Greg and Scott with Capital Rivers Commercial. Yeah, thank you uh, for having us here and uh, hopefully we can help some folks uh, kind of figure out what their action plan is. It's, it's obviously uh, challenging times right now and there's a lot going on and things are changing on a daily basis. So. Uh, we're just grateful to uh, to be here and participating, and, and hopefully we can help some folks out. Yeah, well, thank you. We appreciate it. We're going to have questions. I know you have um, a presentation, so what I was thinking, uh, Greg and Scott, uh, let you sort of navigate through your, your presentation, and I will sort of interrupt you uh, throughout with my own uh, questions. I'm a tenant and I am a landlord and I have portfolio companies that are brick and mortar and I have others that are in co-working spaces and so they have a variety of uh, uh, angles from which I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking a perspective so hopefully I can do our uh, audience a little bit of justice um, as we go but maybe I'll let you start down the presentation if that's okay. Yeah, perfect. And we'll do our best to answer all the questions. Um, <laughs> we did prepare a tenant survival guide uh, which there'll be a link at, at the end of the presentation and uh, folks can download that guide. And uh, we're also working on a landlord uh, survival guide. And then following that, we'll have kind of uh, an investor survival guide. So a lot of uh, the points are, you know, in the tenant guide also apply to the landlord side and vice versa. 
Um, but, uh, you know, if there's a landlord question or something that comes up on that, that end, uh, you know, I encourage people to ask questions and uh, we'll address those as well. So it's not just specific to uh, tenants. Um, so might as well uh, dive into it. I'll uh, share my screen and go to the presentation here. Hold on one second. Okay, can everybody see it? Yeah, it looks good. Perfect. All right, we'll just jump into it. So, uh, you know, a, a big thing is just having a plan. Um, you know, it's really hard to do anything without a plan. So, and that plan can change, but you got to start somewhere. And so, you know, we recommend, uh, you know, kind of starting out and uh, just taking, uh, you know, a, a look at where you're at right now, um, you know, uh, devise the, the preparedness plan. So that's what we're going to kind of go through is the structure of how to create that. Um, and, and just Greg, I'll just interject, just kind of clearly set the framework. I mean, the, the idea is you're, uh, you're in a situation where, you know, like you're a restaurant, you're a retailer, um, what have you, and again, not to make this exclusively focused to tenants, but, uh, the idea being that you're, uh, you're in the midst of this crisis, you're, um, probably either getting no traffic or you've actually been required to shut your doors you've got no income, um, but you've got a lease and you've got lease obligations and you've got rent coming due. Uh, in this case, April 1st, you got rent coming due. Um, what are you going to do? It's kind of, it legitimately, it's, it's a little bit of a panic time. Um, and so that's, I just think I kind of want to get set the framework. I think we all know that, but I think it kind of helps. Yeah. Good, good point. Um, Thanks, Scott. And then obviously cash is king, you know, everyone's uh, for the most part trying to preserve capital right now uh, as best they can. So, you know, big uh, uh, expenditure is obviously uh, rent and operating expenses. Um, so I'm sure that's top of mind for anyone that's got a uh, brick and mortar. Um, and then, uh, you know, structuring the solution. So, um, you know, everyone's solution is going to be a little bit different depending on their situation. Uh, so, you know, we'll walk through kind of what those steps are and, and how to uh, work with your landlord uh, to come up with the appropriate solution. And, and I'll just interject kind of one of, the, one of the points before you even dive into your lease is maybe just take a look at your, uh, your cash flow situation, maybe see where you are compared to the prior year. Um, or maybe the prior couple of years, um, just kind of look at your financials and and look at them as they as they stand currently. Kind of flesh out: Are you in a seasonal business um, where you might be taking a dip um, due to that, as opposed to the crisis? Or just make sure you know where you you stand. Um, how much of this is of your current situation is driven by the, the virus, um, just so you have a, a complete picture of, uh, of your financials right now. And one of the things I would add on that uh, is um, Haney Biz, we have an, uh, an accounting bookkeeping group, uh, outsource CFO type services. Um, if somebody has a question about that, you can hit Rick up after or send him a, an email or a text or, or a message through here because it's something where we're kind of just going hands on right now and we know that there's a need so we can help you to sort of look at your balance sheet look at your p l and and help you make some good decisions and from a landlord's perspective too um you know most of them are going to ask the question well you know what were your your top line sales what was your bottom line um you know on at what was your average and what is it compared to now and because that's going to, you know, uh, play a role in the, the negotiations and the discussions that you have with the landlord. Because, uh, you know, most landlords want to help out, but they also don't want to give away free money, right? So it's finding that balance that, that works for both parties. Um, you think like in a situation where, let's say you have a strong enough balance sheet to, I'm thinking of one of, uh, one of the entities that I'm working with, um, they're going to have sales that go to um, 
like almost nothing, right? They're going to get cut way down. And uh, at least for, uh, for this year, it looks like. Um, and okay, they have enough money to pay their rent, but their, their revenues are, uh, are just, you know, are going to take a huge hit. So, you know, where does, where does rent stack up in this thing? You know, how to, how to rationalize that? Well, cause you look at his, the person's balance sheet and it's like, that's good, but you know, you're yeah. expecting a lot of revenue this year. That's not going to happen. Well, cash on hand projections, um, you know, uh, managing cash flow going into the, you know, the near future, nobody knows what's going to happen. So obviously you're going to have expend, you know, payroll expenses and other expenses. And, um, you know, it's, there's no right solution. I think it's just really understanding where you stand today, uh, where, where your financials are, and then trying to project out into, you know, the near future as best you can, you know, how much cash you're going to need to keep on hand, you know, um, obviously you might need to, you know, there might be some priorities, right? So you're going to set priorities in terms of how you spend that cash. And, uh, you know, maybe rent isn't at the top of the list and, and you need to have that conversation with the, the landlord, um, you know, and help them understand your business model. Well, and, let me, let me ask you a question. Let's say you're preparing your plan. You, you don't want to make a snap decision on the plan. It's going to take you a few days. You got to come talk to Haney biz or somebody else to kind of, and maybe sleep on it to some extent. Um, should you reach out to your landlord today and let them know uh, that you're running into um, a situation and, and maybe start asking them questions? Um, how should you be uh, thinking about the communication? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the more communication, the better, and being proactive, I think, is uh, critical. Um, and so that's once you kind of run through our three steps, um, you know, hopefully that gives you the, the baseline to be able to go and have a conversation with your landlord that's based on, you know, on the facts of the situation and your current position, whether, you know, whether it's really, really bad, like I can't pay at all, or I'm preparing to make sure that I survive you know, through this, but I, I, you know, maybe still have some cash on hand. So, um, you know, getting into kind of the, uh, what was that? Well, as a matter of fact, I mean, that's kind of our, our plan, uh, Mark is, is, is kind of a three-step process. And the third, the third step is approaching the landlord after you've done your homework. Um, right. and I mean, frankly, you could almost just say, Hey, um, I know I'm, I'm kind of in trouble here, landlord. I'm doing my homework. Uh, just give them a heads up. I think that yeah. communi communication, communication, communication as much as possible, but you want a chance to get your ducks in a row probably before you have a serious conversation. Okay. Yep. So, so the things to, to kind of review first before you have that conversation uh, with the landlord about you know, what your solution might be is uh, obviously look at your rent, what are you paying? That includes your, uh, your extra expenses, sometimes, you know, triple nets, they're called. So taxes, insurance, common area. Um, you know, if you uh, pay into uh, a merchant's association or, you know, whatever your all-in gross rent number is and what, what's the makeup of that. Um, you know, when is your lease expiring? You know, do you have a year left? Do you have two years left? Do you have options? Um, and that'll, uh, that'll come into play if you enter into a rent deferral type situation and, you know, agree to amortize the, the deferral over the remaining term might elect to exercise an option so that the payment's not as high. Um, you know, understand reading your default sections. You know, what does it mean if you're in default? Um, you know, what are the penalties? Um, you know, guarantees, um, you know, did you sign the lease under, you know, an LLC that maybe you know, it doesn't really have, uh, you know, much in terms of assets, um, you know, that could potentially work to your advantage. Did you personally guarantee the lease? Do you have co-guarantors? You know, what does it mean for them or for you on a personal level if you default under your lease um, and don't make your, meet your obligations? Um, you know, security deposit, and this is an easy one. If you, uh, your, your landlord's holding onto a security deposit and you know you've been a good tenant and you paid your rent and you've, you've done everything that you uh said that you were going to do um you know one of the, the first things you can do is say hey can you uh, credit that security deposit towards my rent um 
and uh, you know operating covenants and co-tenancy. You know sometimes leases uh, are tied to uh, you know other tenants, an anchor tenant in the shopping center. So if the grocery store uh, or you know maybe that grocery store is probably not the best <laughs> example because they're doing well now, but you know maybe your lease was uh, your business feeds off of uh, the traffic of a gym, and so in your lease it says you know. Uh, you know, if the gym closes, then you have a right to go dark or you have a right to terminate your lease. Um, you know, so understanding those provisions and, and uh, how you might be able to, you know, use those or how they might impact you uh, is important. You know, do you have the right to go dark or not operate your, your business? You know, some leases say that you have to stay open. Um, you know, just understanding those provisions is really key. Uh, insurance, this is a big one. You know, a lot of people are talking about you know, well, does my um, business interruption insurance cover anything or does my property insurance cover anything? And, and the answer is it depends, <laughs> you know, and it also sometimes landlords, uh, you know, are, are carrying insurance uh, on behalf of the tenant and they're charging you through, you know, some of these extra expenses in the lease. So understanding what the landlord's insurance is, uh, is also important. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about insurance uh, next. And then force majeure. This is another big topic that uh, has been discussed as of recently, which is, you know, things that are uh, out of your control. Um, you know, uh, for example, a pandemic or a hurricane or a fire. Um, you know, sometimes uh, in contracts, it allows for some relief um, or deferrals. And uh, but there's you know, certain, uh, you really got to pay attention to the language. Um, you know, for example, it, it might not let you out of your obligation to pay rent. You know, you'd probably still have to pay your financial obligations. Um, so just reading through that language and, and understanding it as best you can is, is really important. Yeah. And just, and just take out, take out your lease and take out a notepad and just go through all those areas of the lease that, uh, that Greg just outlined. And because uh, those are all the things that are going to have some sort of interplay with your, with your conversation with your landlord, at least potentially. So just kind of it, it's not fun, um, but just kind of do the dirty work and go through your lease, make notes, make marginal notes, have a separate notepad, whatever. Um, but just understand uh, kind of the ins and outs of your lease. And if you don't understand the provisions, you know. You can give us a call or call your uh, your attorney or call you know if you've got some other advisor that that understands those uh, provisions um, you know by all means reach out I mean uh, yeah I think Mark you'd probably be the first one to agree that you know the business community is out there to help right now and uh, you know so I'm not that was one of the reasons we put this guide together is we want uh, you know whether there are existing client or not you know reach out and we'll we'll uh, help you understand those provisions and what they mean. Um, Very cool. Step two is going to a continuance of, of uh, step one, you know, doing your homework beyond just what's in your lease. So, you know, review your insurance policy, um, you know, and, and probably more importantly, since insurance is, is one of those uh, incredibly complex, confusing, uh, you know, topics is call your insurance. Uh, agent or provider and say, Hey, here's the situation, you know, am I covered or not? Um, you know, more than likely if you've got business interruption insurance, uh, unfortunately a pandemic's probably not going to be covered. Um, it's an exclusion unless you got an endorsement and most people, you know, don't think to go get a pandemic endorsement. It's not something that, you know, comes up in conversation. Um, yeah, you know, it's actually, uh, yeah, back in '03 with the uh, SARS epidemic, um, apparently what happened as a result of that, um, the insurance industry reacted by excluding pandemics specifically from business interruption insurance coverage. So uh, that's something we learned as we uh, as we dug into this. So you're you're probably going to be um, out of luck. Um, unless you happen to have some unique circumstance or maybe you can get creative, your insurance agent might be able to get creative. Um, there's actually something going on in the, uh, 
I think especially the the restaurant industry, which is obviously kind of the the prime prime victim of this of this crisis, is they're trying to get. And I think this is pretty smart. They're trying to as a way to provide relief to the restaurant industry the restaurant industry is trying to convince the federal government to basically force the insurance industry to cover this this pandemic under the business interruption coverage and then the idea being that they would have to that the 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 industry would probably go bankrupt if if they were just simply forced to do it without any backing from the federal government so the idea would be federal government would would require them to include coverage uh for this pandemic but then they would back the industry and that would be that was that is seen as a really efficient way to provide the um, financial support that the restaurant industry and probably other industries as well um, really need rather than doing handouts or tax credits or something that would be incredibly cumbersome and inefficient. Um, so I've seen a couple, uh, at least a couple people talking specifically on, uh, on that point. So um, yeah, that I, saw th I saw that on CNBC. Um, and so I sort of wondered, you know, these, these uh, government programs are changing right before our very eyes in different parts of the, you know, whether it be HR or, you know, the human, human side of things. Uh, but what, uh, how many people really have business interruption insurance? I mean, especially when you start talking about small business, is it really yeah. all that common? Uh, I think... I think it's pretty common and I think, um, but maybe not small business, but maybe the, on the landlord side. So okay. I think, and again, this, this is kind of why we say it's such an esoteric uh, topic that you, you have to be an expert to really understand how it works. But I think um, just kind of putting two and two together, I think, I think it is in play for, in most situations and then maybe the idea would be that the uh federal government just says hey even if they don't have business interruption coverage um put it in place you know if they have any policy if they have property damage insurance if they have liability coverage and i you know i, I think that kind of remains to be seen but i i don't imagine if you're a small business and you don't have business interruption coverage I don't imagine you're going to be out of luck because as you say, Mark, I don't think it's that common for the, for the mom and pop tenants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the other thing is to look at, you know, government programs. So um, like we just mentioned, you know, the, the federal government, uh, uh, you know, passed a relief uh, stimulus, the two, two trillion dollar relief stimulus. We have no idea what kind of this, you know, in the framework or the details of it yet. So, and, you know, unfortunately, it, it might be a little bit uh, too late for some folks, but, uh, you know, that's in the works, um, you know, local uh, city of Sacramento has an ordinance that uh, basically is forbidding uh, um, evictions, which, uh, which just applied to residential, but now applies to commercial as well. Um, that yeah, actually just came out. Passed last night uh, or yesterday. Yeah, last I saw that. I saw um, that this, the county of Sacramento, though, uh, it got voted down. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 So if you're somebody that's in the county, right, not in the city itself, it's probably not going to be there for you. But if you are in the, in the city, you've got that. So what is that anyway? What, how does that work? Yeah, we, <laughs> we it, it's, uh, it's like everything, devil's in the details. And... So we, we honestly have not had time yet to, to digest it because it just happened last night. And I just was able to find the, the actual ordinance by digging around uh, about an hour or two ago. But I think, I think it's really, and don't quote me on this, but I think the, the area where it's going to be of the most help to tenants is not the fact that they that you can't be evicted for the next couple months. I think it's going to be the fact that it looks 
again, don't quote me, but it looks like it's allowing for a 120 day deferral of your rent obligation. Um, so I think that's where the actual value is going to be for the tenants is it just kind of gives them some breathing room. Yeah. Um, cause I don't think, I don't think landlords are going to be rushing to the, to the courthouse to evict anytime soon, but they're going to want their rent. And I think there may be forgiveness or, or uh, prohibition on late fees. Um, also, so you may, that may be, and we'll, we'll put something on our, our website to address this, you know, when I get a chance to examine it. But, um, I think it may just be kind of a deferral of some breathing room on the, on the rent obligation. Okay. We have links to a lot of these if you go to our website as well. Um, okay. And what, whatever you guys share, um, maybe tag me on social media or something. So that way, maybe I can sh remember to share it or it prompts me to do something with it uh, that could help our community as well. Cause we're sharing the community, obviously. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, and then SBA is also providing some uh, short term bridge loans. Um, and there's some information on our website about that as well. Um, you know, to help during this, uh, this time. Um, so that, you know, that might be beneficial for some companies and, you know, obviously taking on debt is not ideal during these times, but it might be, you know, kind of the only solution. And if it's cheap debt, then, you know, it's, uh, it, it might work well. Um, yeah. you know, if you're a franchisee, uh, you know, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to your franchisor. You know, a lot of, uh, franchisors are, you know, providing some relief, um, Subway, you know, recently said that they're reducing their royalties by 50%, and I think they're uh, they're not requiring contributions to their marketing funds and things like that. And I know there's a handful of other friends that are, uh, you know, make sure that you're aware of that. And, you know, most likely as well, you know, landlords will be more sophisticated. They might ask you, like, hey, what's your franchisor doing for you? You know, how are they helping you? Um, so that's uh, important. Um, and even and then understand how your landlord. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, chiming in. Um, yeah, even if you're, the answer from your fran franchisor is, no, I'm sorry, we're not going to help you. At least that you can tell your landlord that, and that shows that you've done all your homework. You're not just coming in for charity. You're, you're doing, you've, you're, you're, you've gone through every channel you can. The other thing I've seen with uh, franchisors is they're uh, allowing you to put off capital expenditure. Sometimes they require you to put in a, an upgraded uh, something or other in your business to stay to, to code or whatever to the, uh, you know, the, the, what, yeah. what the franchisees need to do. But they're, they're able to say, hey, you don't have to do that right now. Yeah, there was a... Um I don't remember if it was Taco Bell or there's a, a handful of QSRs that, are, that had a big remodel program going on and they said, okay, you know, we'll put that on hold. We're not going to do that requirement. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Um, you know, and then, and then understanding, you know, who your landlord is and how they likely view you, you know, is your landlord, uh, you know, a, a local small, you know, property owner, this is the only, you know, asset that they have, you know, if you're in a, strip retail center or shopping center, you know, or are they a, uh, you know, a large landlord with millions of square feet? Are they a you know, real estate investment trust? Like un understanding who you're dealing with and, and, uh, and then likely how they view you, you know, are you a uh, 1200 square foot tenant in a, you know, 300,000 square foot shopping center? And that happens to be one of 40 shopping centers that that landlord owns. You know, you're probably not going to be at the top of their list in terms of, uh, you know, getting their attention. They're going to be focusing on, you know, who, you know, the their tier one, you know, priority uh, tenants, which are usually the anchor tenants, uh, the nationals, and uh, you know, just understanding that. I mean, it's just the reality. Do you feel um, like? Yeah, uh, so sorry about that. Uh, maybe I ask what question. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. Um, a landlord that has uh, six million square foot of property. Isn't there some sort of um, requirement that uh, they sort of treat all of the people in some kind of systematic way so that they don't have they can't pick out their favorites? I don't. I'm not aware of anything. Um, 
Yeah, I don't believe so. I, yeah, it's a little that, different than the residential side. You can, you, it's a little bit more uh, wild west, and uh, you know, kind of comes down to the uh, the economics and and uh, you know the negotiation. Um, I mean, I would hope you know we we work with some larger landlords. Um, you know, like like Phillips Edison is one, and you know, the first thing they did was reach out to all of their uh, tenants and just say, hey, we're we're here, and they put a task force together. And, you know, they, they they took it head on rather than just I'm going to sit back and wait. You know, for people to to reach out to me. Um, you know, and they're you know, because they they've got so much space. You know, they had to create some sort of system to prioritize and deal with all the requests because they just got you know inundated. Um, so they're they're putting that you know kind of system into place to be able to get back to everybody, but. Um, you know, just understanding the, the landlord's position, um, you know, and you can even take it one step further, right, which I, I don't think most tenants need to understand, but, you know, if, you're, if your landlord owns the property free and clear, you know, they might have a little bit more flexibility. If they have a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a credit union, uh, you know, that, that's got the mortgage. Um, you know, that might be a little bit different than if they have a CMBS loan, you know, CMBS loans aren't going to provide much relief for the landlords, they might be, you know, uh, less likely to be able to assist, you know, so, you know, I don't think that you need to get into that level of detail, but just having a general understanding of, of who your landlord is, you know, how big are they, how small are they, um, is important to understand. Um, yeah, they, any, any, uh, any property owner, any commercial property owner will tell you, I mean, they're, their lender uh, is just an enormous part of their equation of, of doing business as a landlord. So um, if, if they happen to own the property free and clear, that, uh, that will make them a lot more able to, uh, to, be, to provide flexibility. And uh, conversely, if they're like most landlords and they've got a, got a, a lender, um, a mortgage or, or mortgagee rather, um, they're uh, they're probably their hands really are probably going to be tied to a certain degree, but um, you you know hopefully they won't abuse that and and just say I can't my hands are tied without them actually being tied. And I think uh, I think a lot of lenders will will probably try to be helpful, but some some may not. Yeah, I had a, a conversation with um, Toro Capital Advisors out of LA. So they, they're one of our uh, capital advisory firms. And I was just kind of asking them what they're seeing because things are obviously changing day by day. And, uh, you know, the, the hard money lenders, uh, you know, really pulled back and are just taking a pause. Um, and, but some of the other, you know, uh, credit unions are of your your interest or your payments um, you know so it looks like you know the majority of lenders are actually being, uh, there. we got a bad connection with you greg i'm sorry um i'm only catching every other word scott i can hear you yeah. uh loud and clear i'm i don't yeah. know if there's anything we can do greg with your uh connection uh, you were you've kind of gone in and out throughout the whole presentation so um i don't know if you yeah can... yeah why don't i uh maybe try and pick up the uh the pre maybe greg if you can uh work the slides but i'll kind of try and work the presentation yeah perfect i'm not sure why it's not yeah that's that uh it's that internet connection in your neck of the woods um so anyway yes. so <laughs> so uh i think it kind of we at this point we kind of covered all of the uh the homework steps you've done you've done you've done your lease review you've done all your background work um contacting your insurance agent evaluating the government relief programs may be available if you're a franchisee talking to your franchise or understanding your landlord you sort of put together your um, your need in light of everything that that's going on. Putting together your financial uh, financial internal financial review, looking at your financials. Kind of what do you need 
to survive and in the long run thrive for your business. And now you talk, now you approach your landlord. And I think that's the next, next slide. If you want to go to that, Greg. And so I think it's, uh, so you're fully prepared. You approach your landlord, you, uh, you reach out to them, tell them you'd like to, to meet, you know, I guess in this day and age, maybe that's, maybe that's a virtual meeting or a phone call. Um, but you, uh, you just say, Hey, I'd like to talk. And, uh, and then you kind of get into the, the nuts and bolts, um, you know, be willing to, uh, or, and just be proactive sharing your, your financial data, um, where you're at, what's been, uh, what's been impacted by the, uh, or how you've been impacted, um, by the virus, um, get into it, show kind of what your needs are financially. Um, you know, like in any negotiation, you, you don't want to be dishonest, but you probably want to show your kind of start, start high, um, on what you kind of need, make the case as best you can for, Hey, um, in order to survive here, this is what I need. And, uh, and just kind of stepping back, just one more, one more variable here, you know, I guess we haven't actually said it yet and maybe it goes without saying, but landlords are very loath to lose tenants and um you know aside from kind of altruism and and morality that's probably your your best piece of leverage is that your landlord just doesn't want to have to replace you um and so just keep that in mind um you've got just just by the fact that they've got you on the hook for um for a rental obligation over a period of time and they don't have to fill a vacancy with all the time and, and cost um, and uh, opportunity cost that goes into that. You've got, you've got some, you've got some leverage there. Uh, yeah. Thinking about that. Can I ask you about that leverage? Cause I mean, none of us has a crystal ball, but you can see, you can forecast probably more clearly than the rest of us, what's going to happen with the commercial market. Let's talk about Sacramento. You know, we have offices, we've got retail, industrial. Industrial has been pretty hot. Uh, retail, um, I, I assume in brick and mortar is just sort of softer. Um, and as we think about what this crisis is going to do to restaurants and retail, even, even service businesses, um, if, if people get afraid of uh, the face-to-face -face or, you know, maybe over the next 12, 24 months before society comes back, but it might come back different. So does that fear of, uh, of a restaurant just going away? God, I got, a, I got an end cap that's a restaurant. If that person doesn't make it, I might be vacant for a couple of years. That, that's a very insightful point. Um, and that, I think you're right. It, it just puts the idea that they don't want to lose, lose you on steroids. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, a smart, a smart forward thinking landlord is going to realize that they're, they've got a lot of incentive not to lose you and to work with you. So I'm a landlord. Okay. So what I'm trying to put myself in both shoes a little bit so I could imagine what the ask might be. Okay. So we can't pay while we're closed or we can only pay, you know, we're doing a takeout. So our business is cut down to a third um, and which makes us not profitable. We need to buy some time. Uh, is there any uh, thought about, Hey, I'll sign a lease extension um, knowing that, rents in the future might be depressed um can we is it safe to say that rents uh 24 months from now are likely going to be less than they are today is this a good time just to renegotiate the whole lease <laughs> yeah i'm not sure if you can can you hear me now or is it still yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yeah. okay yeah I, I think it's it's situational right i mean i think that human nature we have short-term memory so, you know, I think in, in the short term, everyone's still going to continue to remember, uh, you know, this epidemic and how it impacted and, you know, people are going to be washing their hands more and staying, you know, further away from each other. But, you know, personally, and, I, you know, I, I think that uh, people over time will forget and they'll move on to whatever the next big thing is, um, you know, so I, I wouldn't be quick to say, you know, restaurants are going away. I think people are you know, social by nature. And I don't think that's going to change. And, uh, you know, it might just change for the short term, right? 
Um, you know, and then, and then in terms of what's going to happen, you know, with the commercial market, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say, but I, you know, I, I think that it might provide some opportunity for those that, uh, you know, are in a position right now. Um, you know, vacancy rates have been, uh, you know, in incredibly low. Uh, so there's not been, you know, a lot of retail space available. Um, you know, there, there hasn't been a lot of office space available and certainly not industrial space. Um, you know, there's a lot of big boxes available, but those have started filling up uh, as well. Um, you know, so it might create an opportunity for folks to get into some space that maybe somebody else, another business that wasn't as healthy, uh, you know, they weren't able to make it. So, um, and maybe, uh, you know, with any would you say an opportunity might be to, uh, especially if you've got somebody who owns a lot of property to sort of, uh, downsize your space but stay in with a longer term lease or something like that so that so that they keep a ten they keep the same uh tenant but you're just reducing the monthly you know the monthly spend yeah i mean i think anything at this point is on the table for discussion yeah i would say that probably most landlords are going to be uh hesitant to do a completely new lease or you know completely uh uh, you know, revise the rent structure, uh, you know, for five or 10 years or something like that, because we just don't know what the future holds. So, you know, I would say that, you know, most landlords, maybe not all, but uh, would be more inclined to do kind of a short term solution until everything kind of levels out and, and you can understand how it's going to impact the market. Um, you know, otherwise, you, you, you might be having the same conversation six months from now again. Um, so, you know, I think it, it kind of just depends, but, you know, I'm pretty optimistic. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, just from talking with some of our clients, uh, you know, they still want to grow. They still want to move forward. Um, they just pump the brakes a little bit, but we're still looking for sites. Um, you know, they're just being a little bit more careful, right? They're, you know, maybe not, you know, taking on the really high, uh, high rent, deals or they're prioritizing a purchase versus a lease or you know i mean just kind of retooling their strategy but uh um yeah i think it, it kind of all just depends okay very helpful so um just kind of going back into the kind of the the point of uh making the ask and what that looks like um you know kind of in in specific specific terms I mean, the, the most likely, most um, attractive option for, uh, for a tenant is just getting a rent reduction. I mean, that's plain and simple. Um, and, you know, what would be great if you could just get a rent forgiveness, um, sort of an absolute, we're, we're going to cut your rent um, in half for the next three months or the next six months or give you two free months of rent or whatever it's going to be. I mean, that's your best, best case scenario is something like that, that, that fits your, your financial profile. Um, you realistically, you might be only be only able to get a deferral, um, of your rent. So your landlord, uh, you may need to talk to him about a, uh, you know, taking, taking your current rent, um, while your doors are closed and saying, um, you know, we're, we're going to take three months, six months, whatever, we're going to um, slice your rent or forgive it. And then we're going to tack it on um, later in your lease term when, when things we assume are going to be better. Um, and that could be, you know, a typical thing would be spreading that out, spreading that out over the, uh, the remainder of the term. Um, what you call amortizing, um, you know, you might even take a, uh, an, give that an interest component. So it's almost like your landlord's just kind of making you um, a short-term loan or financing your, uh, your forgiveness um, or financing your um, inability to pay rent in the, in the short term. Um, and when you look at it that way, I mean, they're, they're getting interest and you're ultimately agreeing to pay them back um, for all the, all the forgiven rent or the deferred rent. Um, I mean, yes, they're, they're taking the risk that you're not going to be able to meet that obligation. But, you know, aside from that, you're telling them we're going to be good for everything we've uh, agreed to pay you. We just need more time to pay it. 
Um, so you may just end up going that route. Do you think the climate exists much right now where you can say, look, I'm going to move, uh, look, I'm, I'm restructuring my entire business. I'm, I, I know I'm personally guaranteeing it and so on, but hey, how about if I give you a cash, you buy, basically buy out your lease. Is that, uh, are we in a climate where that, that's uh, feasible? Yeah, I mean, it's I definitely, think it is, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Greg. No, I definitely think that's on the table. Um, you know, some landlords, you know, maybe they want this space back because they've got a tenant that, you know, uh, still, you know, they get a right? little bit more. Later. Yeah. I'm not sure what the it needed the internet, for, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, we may have to have you I jump in a little more out? forcefully, Scott. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think the, the short answer is absolutely a buyouts on the table. I mean, you never know what, um, I mean, that's on our, our survival guide that, uh, that's one of the points. Um, and we're going to, that's available on our website and we're going to give you the link at the end. So you don't have to be taking notes on all this, but you're, you're right, Mark, that, um, I mean, you, you never know what your, your landlord's particular situation is. Um, they may just be interested in getting, getting the space back. I know that goes kind of con contrary to some of the things we've been saying. Um, but they may very well, um, you know, for the right sum, I mean, for, there's always a price for everything. So there, there is some price where you could buy out your lease. Um, you know, in this scenario, it's probably not, not going to be a high number that, that the tenant's going to want to pay or be able to pay, but it's definitely on the table. Um, happens all the time. Um, okay, so we might, uh, I, is this close to the end? We have about five to eight minutes left, and we want to make sure we give our uh, Rick a chance to answer a few, ask a few questions. I have a, a couple of more, so just kind of getting the sense as to. Yeah, uh, no, that, no, we basically covered everything, and uh, we have like kind of a few more ideas, like maybe incentives you can provide to your landlord to get them to agree to uh, some sort of rent reductions, and that's, that's in the, the tenant survival guide. Um, so that's, that's a good, you mind sharing that a little bit, like what, like ideas, like something that maybe we wouldn't have thought of. Oh, just like, uh, what well, you mentioned already committed, committing to an extended term, uh, that you didn't, uh, you know, you're, you're obligating yourself to more, uh, more to your landlord in the long run than you currently obligated to, uh, maybe, um, providing a, uh, a personal guarantee if you didn't have one previously. Um, you could even offer, offer your landlord to share your business, mm. just make them an absolute partner with you. Um, give them my, you know, silent, uh, silent minority partner, share your business and it, just think of everything. That's, we've covered mm. that. Um, mow the yard, mow the, do the landscaping for them, <laughs> do the landscaping, uh, you know, uh, manicure their, manicure their toenails, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay very helpful um yeah. and then you had a few more thoughts too scott no no i mean that's okay. that's basically it. one more you know you could find it if if you just need to close your doors you know you're this has just destroyed your business go out and try and help them find a replacement for you you know yeah. that maybe that's your uh your hail mary um you know whatever uh whatever it takes and and i think we hit most kind most kind of the uh the, the key critical uh, ideas we had. Um, well, percentage but, rent might be an option too. Oh, oh right. Yeah. You're yeah. Paying for sales. Um, right. Move to that sort of model, um, especially as your business starts coming back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, a, there's a question about a move to receipt based rent. And if that is uh, something that you anticipate. Yeah, I'm assuming that's, that's, that's meaning that's percentage great. rent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's on the table, you know, um, you know, the landlord might have, uh, you know, say, hey, continue to pay your taxes, insurance, maintenance, you know, your triple net expenses, but, um, you know, pay me rent based on a percentage of your uh, uh, sales, you know, so, you know, and, and once we get through this, if the sales go up, you know, it might be a windfall for the landlord. Um, so, you know, that's and definitely you you can keep paying base rent and just uh, include a percentage rent component. Right. That allows you to be creative um, if you include that. And if you really want to get creative, you know, there's, you can set break points and there's a whole thing, you know, with percentage rent that, you know, we'll probably have to get into with uh, 
if somebody had some more specific questions, they can give us a call. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely an option. Uh, maybe you could, uh, we've spent a lot of time talking from the uh, tenant's perspective. Um, from a landlord's perspective or a, a business, or excuse me, a, uh, they're, based, they're entrepreneurs, they own, they own buildings and so on, they rent them out. Um, have you heard about relief for them from having to play their, pay their mortgages or pay their, uh, you know, pay the banks? Is there anything on the, on the horizon? Not really, unfortunately. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe some relief if you have a government backed loan, I've seen, uh, you know, a program in place for that, but it's just a deferral. Um, but unfortunately I think the way that our system is set up is it's mostly for, you know, tenants. So, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, one idea I had, which is probably not going to go anywhere is, uh, you know, for landlords that provide relief for their tenants, you know, maybe they get a tax credit, um, you know, or reduced, uh, you know, property tax bill, but uh, I'm not a politician, so. I don't see that going anywhere, especially in California. But yeah, uh, things are things are changing rapidly. Okay, so we have co-working space here at Haney Biz. Um, n- number of businesses have their have their offices here. Do um, you think there's going to be a trend? Just putting on the crystal ball, I think a trend to more co-working or less co-working is uh, as we think about working out of our. We're all get used to working out of our house. I mean, yeah. what what trends do you see? Uh, changing the real estate market from co-working to uh, just people being a little less excited about, you know, I I agree. Restaurants are probably going to make it maybe uh, at at a reduced level, but what about the other businesses where we're all used to, you know, call centers and things like that? Are they, uh, are they going to, I I can tell you that working from home uh, is not as easy as, uh, as I, you know, I think uh, most people uh, are, are experiencing right now. You've got the dog barking or the kid coming in your office or the internet cutting out. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, th- I think there's still going to be a need for co-working. I think it's, it might be a slow uh, uh, recovery because I think people are going to be still, you know, on edge being around other people and trying to you know, keep that six feet or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I think people are, uh, you know, uh, naturally want to socialize. And I, like I said, I think people have short term memory loss. And, uh, you know, I think they'll go back to socializing and being in a social environment. I think it might just take some time. Okay, Rick, I want to make I, sure you I, have a chance. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say, I agree. I agree. I think I think in some ways this is going to become a distant memory faster than we expect. I hope so. Uh, Rick, do you have some thoughts or questions that you want to, uh, I know you want to keep us on track, but you might want to help us close it out at some level. Yeah, we're wrapping up now. And you asked my future looking question. So you stole the, the great question I had come up oh, with. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th- I think uh, Greg did a great job of answering it. And that's, you know, uh, we're learning new behaviors, but uh you know, we still uh, are eager for the co-working environments and the office environments and the stability uh, of those places. So, um, yeah, that's, I think, the best that we know today, right? So uh, I just want to thank Greg and Scott and Capital Rivers Commercial um, for this great webinar, uh, especially putting all the effort into this um, tenant survival guide and the other guides that you're creating, um, you know, it's, it's amazing to see how you're rallying around the community and, and creating this valuable content. So thank you so much for being a community partner with Haney Biz and um, you know, for your investment of time and expertise. Um, we're just really appreciative to have you as partners. Uh, this will be um, released, this recording, again, on our YouTube channels and our podcast channels. So um, if you uh, heard something that was helpful or you know someone that could benefit from this, please share it. Uh, please visit Capital Rivers Commercial um, website so you can download the guide yourself and connect with Greg and Scott um, or reach out to Haney Biz and we'll get you connected. Um, but, but thank you guys. This has been uh, really helpful and uh, you know, extremely important information. Yeah, thanks for having us. We, we appreciate it very much. And uh, you know, we're, we're here to help the business community. So you know, anyone that has questions, you know, we're not looking to get a fee or you know, anything like that. We just want to help. So. 
Um, One thing I want to add to before we let you guys close out. So I think at this time, we want to put the people in our life that can help us make the big decisions. And so whether it be in real estate or with personnel or with the numbers, you need, we need to put people in our lives. So you guys came from the sleep train. So you guys have your own business today. Um, but you were uh, key in the in the uh, enormous growth of the sleep train. So your your background is uh, is sort of uh, part of the entrepreneurial story of Sacramento, and now you're doing it again on your own. So I think it's it's always good to work with people that uh, know what success looks like, and now they're uh, now they're helping other people um, to find that success as well. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, we learned a lot from Dale Carlson. He's uh, he's a great leader and and mentor and uh you know a lot of what we do in in our business and our business model is as a result of the things that he did and you know surrounding yourself with good people and you know looking out for each other and uh you know those are all you know key things that uh that we truly believe in and we learned a lot of that from dale thank you thank you guys all right thank thank you everyone um and to the attendees we hope to see you again tomorrow 2 p.m we have uh, silvers hr uh, talking about just a few small changes in the HR world and how important that will be uh, for employers and entrepreneurs, small businesses, et cetera. So um, keep following us, um, keep attending, and uh, thank you everyone for your support. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching today's show. My goal for every episode is that you find a takeaway, something tangible you can use in your business today. And if you have a comment about a favorite takeaway, feel free to put it in the in the box below. And if you have a a topic that you'd like me to bring up on the show, don't forget to let me know. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn more about entrepreneurship. Because at Haney Biz, we are always by your side.